<clears throat> Let's not turn it up too loud. I'm going to do an audio check. So can we get DishNet high-speed internet over there? Yep. What about over there? Uh-huh. You can get it all over. Well, that's good news. The crop is fighting back tonight, and so is the community. 7 Action News reporter Tom Waite shows us how she's not letting school bullies get the best of her. Here at Okama Heights High School, it was a prank so cruel, so nasty, that it made this teen consider killing herself. 16-year-old Whitney Crop was voted onto the homecoming court as a joke. I had actually thought about suicide. How she's not letting school bullies get the best of her. Here at Okama Heights High School, it was a prank so cruel, so nasty, that it made this teen consider killing herself. 16-year-old Whitney Crop was voted onto the homecoming court as a joke. I had actually thought about suicide for how bad this case was. And it got that bad? Yes, it did. I thought I wasn't worthy at Ogama Heights at all. When Whitney first got the news that she won, like any teen, she was elated. But the smiles soon turned to tears. Initially, when I came home from work, she was excited because she had been elected to homecoming court. It wasn't until later in the evening she was in her bedroom and she was upset and crying. Like any protective mother, Whitney's mom was crushed and angry. Shame on you. You were so hurtful to her, and that's that's just mean. But Whitney rallied, and so did the small town of West Branch, where this all happened. A Facebook page of support was launched in her honor, and local businesses banded together to help. Whitney now has a beautiful dress for the dance, and a local salon is going to do Whitney's hair. We're going to do her hair um, as far as an updo or whatever she wants done, and then we will do her nails and her makeup and anything else she wants. We take... <laughs> oh 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 whatever else she wants <laughs> uh I, I just want to i just want to comment on this how like you, you can already see it, it it's already it's already regarded as something horrible it, it's called bullying and cyberbullying and just all kind of other stuff whenever it happens to a female and this is just more evidence that society whether it's males or females but especially even females will at least subconsciously perceive women to be weak and and in need of compensation for their weaknesses and i mean it's just the the biggest and most significant sources of misogyny is actually feminism itself because by, you know, in order to get all the protections, provisions, privileges, rights, whatever, to in order to get what they want, they have to portray themselves as victims or somebody who's been cheated out of something or whatever. But in doing that, what they're really saying is that they are not adequate. They're also saying that they are not up to... um they're not up to the task of dealing with the world and all the stresses that the world throws at them. They are, they are in effect, their own self-haters. And they do it with impunity. And they still are, are like, they, they're still caught up in this psychosis. And so is society. They're caught up in this psychosis of you know, blaming men for all this. I mean, fuck. I mean, god damn. Like, you hear all this pathetic bullshit about how, like, most women died during childbirth throughout all of history, and that's all the, you know, and, and just like, you know, all these extra burdens that, that, that women have been faced with and all that. And who else was it? Was it Barbarossa or Stardust or, or, <clears throat> or was it uh, that cynical cynicism? That or or was it that cynical cynicism who pointed out that if women really died during, if if most women died during childbirth, then how then how would it be possible for human populations to reach seven billion? 
I mean, the shit that feminists spout off with is pretty damn easy to counter. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, fuck. Um, so, you see... Uh, you see how it really is. I mean, they just they just play the victim perpetually throughout history or, or portray themselves as history's victims and all this stuff in an attempt to try to get their way. I mean, it's just like me and the disposable human doing talk about working a job and having a relation and having a relationship with women is is so similar on so many levels. And then the the interactions between men and women are so much like customer and employee types of interactions. I mean, seriously. I mean, like... I mean, look at how customers try to get their way. Whenever they want extra stuff or extra perks or benefits, they they accuse the employee of mistreating them. I mean, look at how these exploits function. And women do the same shit. And I, I say women because it's women that are doing this shit. Now, I'm not, I can't say that men haven't done it either because I've seen some of that stuff. But, I mean, like, when, like men can't, they, they can't get themselves into that victim narrative quite as successfully as women do. You see what I'm saying? Because it's not as plausible. You know, the guy is perceivably stronger, more agile. You know, he he presumably can protect himself better. Therefore, the whole victim narrative is not as plausible for a man as it is for a woman. I mean, why do you, why do you, why do so many of you people out there not understand this? Why? Why do you not understand this? I mean. Oh my gosh, I mean, like, there are some smart people out there who grasp what all this is, but there are too many of you normal dumbasses out there that, like, and, and I use those harsh terms because of how you people function like a bucket of crabs against anybody else who learns how the world really works. I mean... <clears throat> I just got to get on with this video. I, I, I got to let you hear some more of this. Um, as far as an updo or whatever she wants done, and then we will do her nails and her makeup and anything else she wants. We take, took a look at a dress for her, and we're helping her out with um, a gown, um, as well as some other community members are involved with the gown. On YouTube, Whitney posted a video thanking everyone for all the love. That will make a difference to our students who are doing bullying or some will be Wow, and Tom Wade joins us now, and shame on them, as that her mother said. I mean, this girl was thinking about killing herself. This is something you'd normally see in a movie or something. Anything going to happen to these kids who started this? You know, and that's the, the, that's the question right now, because it's very difficult to track down all of the kids who made this vote, who organized this. A lot of times these votes are sort of anonymous. I talked to some school officials tonight who say prosecuting these things or searching for the culprits is tough. I did place a call to the district this afternoon. That call hasn't been returned, but certainly... Certainly, I think that if they can uh, sort of punish any of the people who are involved here, they will. But the good news is she's recovering. And, you know, a lot of teens don't come away from these things as well as she has. So that's the good news. Bad stuff can happen. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but the community is rallying around her. Absolutely. So good news. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I got to see this again. Amy Croft is fighting back tonight, and so is the community. 7 Action News reporter Tom Waite shows us how she's not letting school bullies get the best of her. Here at Ogama Heights High School, it was a prank so cruel, so nasty, that it made this teen consider killing herself. 16-year-old Whitney Croft was voted onto the homecoming court as a joke. I had actually thought about suicide for how bad this case was in. It got that bad. Yes, it did. I thought I wasn't worthy at Ogama Heights at all. When Whitney first got the news that she won, like any t All right. All right. All right. Here, uh, here, we, here we go again. All right. With this, this whole um, 
this whole patheticness. Okay. This gets into who really feels rejection uh, or feels the pain from rejection. I mean, look, I mean, God damn. And, and you know why I'm not having sympathy for this girl right now? Do you know why I am not having sympathy for this girl right now? Because I've been taught from the example of what happened to me that that um, that, that suicide is actually, uh, you know, pathetic and worthy of being ridiculed for even contemplating it. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I mean, like, I've learned from how people have treated me just recently in this month of December 2012. I've learned from the comments that, you know, I see on my videos, you know, I, um, uh, I I've learned that, um, that, that, you know, if, if a person, you know, if a person, um, yeah, you look at these comments here, like if a person, in this case me, a guy, you know, contemplates suicide, then it means that, that I'm some creepy stalker who calls up women and, and, you know, breathes heavily on the phone and, and cruises around in a white van with no windows in it. Um, like something you'd see on TV. I mean, that's where people get all this shit from. They get, they get a bunch of their fears and phobias and illegitimate, um, concerns from what they see portrayed in the media and all that. And, um, yeah, I mean, look at this. I mean, like, you look at it, like, just a bunch of these negative comments. Um, you know, like, look at this. Um... Just the, these negative comments here. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, K Proxy One Thousand One says. I mean, you're you obviously. I mean, you're obviously just trying to get sympathy from this cause. Uh, you're just okay. I mean, obviously, you're just trying to get sympathy from this because no one likes your two-hour-long videos. I mean, you unloaded and loaded the gun like twenty times. Um, and pointed to your head with the safeties off for like twenty-five minutes. Just tell a story about how you almost committed suicide. Blah blah. Was, oh, 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 whoa, whoa, did you harass another girl and it made you feel all depressed again when she rejected you? Is this an annual thing for you? <laughs> see, you see how a dude gets treated during this? Now, you see just right here, and how this girl, uh, how it makes, how the girl felt, now keep in mind, this girl in the video, what happened was, for the homecoming um, event or whatever, I found out about this later from some other videos, that all these people, they were both guys and girls, both genders did it. They voted this girl as homecoming queen or whatever, and then, like, retracted their vote or whatever and told her later it was just a prank. And she says that she felt unworthy and, and she talks about, you know, like, how it made her feel so bad and how she wanted to kill herself. Now, that's pretty fucking pathetic. I mean, fuck. I mean, at least I had a legitimate concern, you know, so that, you know, if, if I didn't exist anymore, then hypothetically, I couldn't make anybody feel uncomfortable in the future. And that, you know what I'm saying? Like, so all this shit that I get accused of would not happen. You know, being a fucking creepy stalker and all this other shit. You see? And then even after I make the video and, and put it up on YouTube, still people fucking pester me. And, <clears throat> and, uh... And, and call me, um, you know, and call me a creepy stalker, and, uh, oh gosh, where's the, um, 
see all comments. Um, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, and I like. And and then I get accused of being gay and all this other kind of shit. Um, here it is. K Proxy One Thousand One says, "Wow, this is the most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. You really need to stay away from women. Period. Your creeper status, your creeper status, is off the charts." And yeah, so so I feel bad about being accused of starting a rumor. Um about some girl being a lesbian, and I didn't even fucking start the rumor because, as I showed a, a screenshot, um, and I need to put it in another video, but anyway, as I showed a screenshot, um, and I'll, I'll make another video about it, as I showed a screenshot of the, the, of the whole dialogue and all that, and I edited out people's names to protect their identities, uh, edited out all people's names involved, no, uh, yeah, I didn't even start the rumor. I was a fucking fall guy. And then the disposable human doing, he got accused of sexual assault just because he grabbed some girl's ass after she had put her ass on his groin all fucking night and all this other shit. <clears throat> yeah, and then a guy gets accused of being a fucking creeper and gets fucking disposed of and all that with allegations and then hates himself for it because it is... It is the ultimate contra... It's the... Because... He's being accused of something that contradicts himself. You know, it contradicts him being the protector provider. To be accused of, you know, a creep. Or sexual deviant or whatever. And so, yeah, I was accused of that kind of shit. And it made me feel really bad. And it made me feel like I wanted to kill myself... So that I would not exist to be a perceived creep or or anything like that, and then and then when I do have suicidal thoughts, I'm regarded as being pathetic and a creep even more so, and all this other stupid shit, and bullied even fucking more, and then you see this girl here, and oh, what was her reason for being suicidal? Oh, because she wasn't really as popular as she wanted to be. Or as she was led on to believe. That is fucking pathetic. And look, that's a woman's reason for being suicidal. Right there. Well, girl's reason. But still, I mean, that is just off the charts with fucking pathetic. And you know why? And, and you know why I'm not sympathetic toward her? First of all, because her reason was pretty pathetic. And another thing is, because I've been taught by example... That people who want to commit suicide are pathetic, loser, creeper, problematic people. Okay? Now, this is the problem here. And, and this is what I'll keep bringing up on my channel. The difference in treatment between men and women for equivalent circumstances or whatever this, you know, it might be. I'm going to swing this mic over and capture this audio again and let you hear what she says, her reason for... Uh, wanting to commit suicide is and let you describe how she felt rejected and felt less of a person and didn't feel adequate and didn't feel validated how she describes these kinds of things and how she felt like she wasn't worthy and she felt insignificant why because she was not the most popular person in the school so this tells you who really suffers from rejection the most it certainly is not men Okay, and if you're and if you actually believe that, there's a lot of things you do not know about this world. Homecoming court as a joke. I had actually thought about suicide for how bad this case was in. It got that bad. Yes, it did. I thought I wasn't worthy at Ogama Heights at all. When Whitney first got the news that she won, like any teen, she was elated. But the smiles soon turned to tears. Initially, when I came home from work, she was excited. Uh, 
All right, and look how it's regarded. I mean, look at this right here. I'll soon turn to tears. Look at this. Community rallies behind bullied teen. So when it happens to a woman or a female, the perceived child worthy of protection, you know, the perpetual child, when it happens to a female, it's regarded as bullying. You know, it's called bullying, you know, and, and she's being bullied, and basically a form of psychological and emotional attack. Uh, whenever it happens to a female, well, now you look at all these comments um, right here. I mean, here it is, I want to stay away from women. And then this little dumb fucker here, KProxy1001, says, you need to stay away from women, as implying that I'm a danger to women. I'm like, you little shit. Um, and look at this. I like how you turn... Oh, fuck. He is even more fucking unsympathetic, and, and he's even more of a bully. I like how you turn it around and say that she had that she has a bad personality because you weren't cool enough to get in. You took the whole rumor situation to another to another level. You obviously have a guilty conscience because you know you're a weird ass. And as for women like attention, yeah, they do, but it's only from someone they want attention from. You need to calm your tits. And you for sh you for damn sure shouldn't own a firearm. Now I tell them it's like you know you're only partly right about this. Women do seek attention to validate themselves. And <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, just all kind of shit. And um, and you know, oh, how about this one? Yeah, Mike Murdoch, you know, he sees this video and he, he sees me talk about how I felt and how it made me want to kill myself. And the dipshit says, go ahead and pop yourself, bitch. Your kid would probably be better off. That That's how it happens to a male, okay? Um, and, um, you know, I mean, just seriously, look, look how males are re regarded as disposable. I mean, look at it. I mean, this tells it all. Uh, or it tells a lot. A picture's worth a thousand words. Uh, as the, the old saying goes. I mean, fuck. And look. Um. Oh, on a warm summer afternoon in Champion, Ohio, Michael Ecker, a 25-year-old Iraq War veteran, called out to his father from a leafy spot in the in their backyard. Then as the two stood just steps apart, Michael saluted, raised a gun to his head, and pulled the trigger. Yep. This stuff is happening so often to men. And who cares? I mean I care, obviously. I have a reason to care. You know, as a lot of other people should. But no, no, we, we just hear about Whitney Krupp and, and how much of a victim she was just because the votes that people made for her being homecoming queen weren't real. Meh, meh. And look at how she portrays herself as a fucking victim and all that, of, of something so fucking insignificant. And it catches, it gets on the fucking news. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look at it. I mean, is this picture not clear to you people? I mean, <clears throat> seriously, women will portray themselves as weak and inferior as long as it gets them what they want. And then in other instances, they say they're all strong and independent. Another fucking attack on a man, saying that they don't need him, therefore he has no reason to exist or do what he does. Man, uh, women... Most women, and I say most because there are women you would never, ever suspect of this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden it fucking surfaces whenever they snap and they do this stuff. This shit is fucking brooding under the surface, beneath the doll face. 
and they will let this shit out. Look at Sharon Osbourne. Everybody used to think she was such a sweet girl and all that. And look what she said, those comments, um, you know, about um, Catherine Q. Becker's husband whenever Catherine Q. Becker cut off his penis and put it in a garbage disposal and destroyed it just because the husband wanted a divorce from his wife. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and fuck, you won't even believe me here. Let's just check this out. Mm. All right. Let us watch this. yourselves because we're about to go there because <laughs> this woman yourselves because we're about to go there because <laughs> this woman we're about to go there because this woman allegedly did according to the Orange County DA's office Catherine Q Becker is accused of cutting off her husband's penis with a knife uh, taking his penis and throwing it into the garbage disposal <laughs> Just see what did you just see on Sharon Osbourne's face? Oh, I caught it. I caught it indeed. Uh, she was moving her finger around in a whirling, circular type of motion, laughing about it and saying that she loves it. You can you can read her lips and see what she says. While Joan Chen, the other woman on the show, uh, tells that the DA that the DA's uh, office. You know, says according to this, the the this event happened. Sharon Osbourne already begins the show, already begins that segment. Here we are, just forty five seconds into it, and she is displaying her her indifference toward male suffering, and actually laughing and poking fun at the suffering of a man, and a man who did not deserve to have his penis chopped off just because he wanted a divorce from his wife. Now, some backstory on this. Um, okay, unlike the Lorena Bobbitt incident, where afterwards she said that, you know, that John uh, Bobbitt tried to rape her or whatever, whatever the fuck, okay? You know, so she made it seem like self-defense and got away with it and became a celebrity and everybody admired her and all that kind of shit. Well, Catherine Q. Becker didn't even bother making up a sexual assault or domestic abuse uh, excuse for what she did. She just sent, when the cops came in and dealt with the situation, she just simply said that the man, you know, her husband, deserved it. She All she said was, he deserved it. <laughs> didn't even bother with a rape allegation or, or, domestic, or domestic violence uh, claim or whatever. Let's watch more of this bigotry. She's been charged with felony torture and aggravated mayhem. Police say Becker attacked him because he filed for divorce. She's being held. She goes, that'll teach him. <laughs> She is being held in a California jail while her husband remains in the hospital. I bet you that those prison guards are wearing one of those, one of those things that have a full of 
Oh, oh, metal oh, cups. Oh, yeah, the, uh, that the athletes wear. Yes, the yes. Jock straps. Cups, cups. Cups, cups. yes. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know the circumstances. I don't know why he filed for divorce. I don't know what was going on between them. However, <laughs> I do think it's quite fabulous. I mean... <laughs> I mean, can you just imagine that thing whizzing around the disposal? It's like hysterical. But however, I think I would have just, depending on why she cut it off, I mean, it does depend on the reasons why. Does it? Oh, yes. Really? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, standards. <laughs> what would be an acceptable reason? I'll, I'll think of one. But I'll just, I would have just thrown it in the dog's bowl. <laughs> dog have to suffer? <laughs> Chewing on an old bone. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember the Lorena Bobbitt, the, the Bobbitt case yeah. where Love her. she kind of did that love first. Her. I like candles by her picture. Yeah. You love Bobbitt? <laughs> well, at least she didn't put it in the garbage disposal, so there was a, they went and they found it in a field somewhere, and they were able to reattach it, but once you put it in the garbage disposal, I guess there's no reattaching that thing. <laughs> Like, was she like, oh, I cut it off, but that's not enough. I'm going to throw it in the garbage disposal. And then turn it off. I'm satisfied by just cutting it off. It's so, you know. I don't know that there's anything that my husband could do to make me that mad, though. Oh, I can think of something. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Really? <laughs> could do to make me that mad, though. Oh, fine, by just cutting it off. Let's hear it. What could a man do to make a woman mad enough to mutilate his penis. We'll hear it. <laughs> I don't know that there's anything that my husband could do to make me that mad, though. Oh, I can think of something. Really? <laughs> All right, like what? <laughs> no, like what? it's actually not funny. I, I just said that to be funny. But there are there are things that I don't want to say because we're, we're, we're laughing about it and it's fun that I can think of one thing. That... La laughing about what? what what's fun? What, what's fun about a person getting their genitalia mutilated like that, hmm? Because we don't, we don't laugh about it when it happens to women. It's actually regarded as, like, you know, a, a crime against humanity and, like, a war crime or, like, some kind of horrible thing whenever it happens to women. So why is it so fucking laughable, laughable enough to be on a national TV show whenever genital mutilation happens to men. That, that a man can do that I would consider chopping up his stuff. Mm. Oh my and goodness. what is it? it, it cheating. No, it's not cheating. No, like, a, I, yeah, I, like I think a, I got no, it. I, I hear you, I hear you. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the first thing they mentioned was cheating. Now, now, she made a logical point. You know, if a man is a sex offender and rapes people, Okay, you know, people think, yeah, chop the, the dude's penis off so he can't do it again. But the first thing they thought to mention was cheating. Oh, they're cheating, yeah, cheating, we're cheating. Because men cheat, and men cheat, and men cheat. Uh, you know, like a bad crime guy. Well, once again, infidelity. When a man is not faithful, oh, we'll just chop his penis off, and then he'll have no choice but to be faithful. You see the difference in treatment between men and women? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I was also thinking, like, I wonder what their fights were like before this. Like, <laughs> what, good point. what their fights were like, do you, oh, if you don't take out the trash, I'm going to cut your penis off. <laughs> right, did he see it coming? Yeah. Right. What are their signs? But totally. allegedly, there's so much premeditation. There's poisoning the food and, or drugging him or tying him up and then when the police got there she was like he deserved it he's in there <laughs> that's what she said I do want to the police she did oh that was nice <laughs> there's something I want to point out though not to be like a total buzzkill mm -hmm. but it is a little bit like sexist like if somebody cut a woman's breast off no one would be sitting laughing like it's not that right to sit around laughing about it if we think about it. It's different, though. It is different. One's floppy and wild. <laughs> One just sticks up like that. It's easy to do that. Some are floppy. Both can be floppy. <laughs> Hello and... <laughs> All right.
All right. So now you've seen how women on this show, and this this show was designed to appeal to the majority of women in American society, and like Barbarossa says, to, to Western women in general. And this show was created by Sarah Gilbert, um, who also is on this show. Uh, this this that's Sarah Gilbert right there. I guess she's a producer or an executive producer or something of the show, but she created the show. And she's also the only voice of reason. She says, you know, not to be a total buzzkill or whatever, but, you know, if this happened to a woman, we wouldn't really be laughing right now. I mean, it's not that funny to laugh about. What does Sharon Osbourne do? She says, oh, it's different. And then another woman says, it is different. Um, Sarah Gilbert, as you see right here, was the only voice of reason on that show in that instance. But, you know, this show is recorded and, and shown, you know, in front of an audience of lots of women. And from what I've seen, none of these women self-identify as a feminist. They just identify as a woman. Which, like Barbarossa, you know, pointed out that these women, they, they have enough hubris because they've gotten away with so much shit in the past They've got the hubris to just let you see a glimpse of the predator beneath the doll mask. Or the predator behind the doll mask. I mean, they do. I mean, look at this. This most insensitive, callous types of remarks coming from what gender? Women. Uh, yes, we know that there are men who commit crimes and do horrible things. We're not going to dispute that. Adolf Hitler, for instance. You know, um, uh, Osama bin Laden is another famous person known for doing horrible things. Uh, Ted Bundy, gosh, like a, a bunch of others. Okay, you know, we hear all day until people are blue in the face from talking about it, about how men have done horrible things. Okay, well, we've already, you know, we're, we're already aware of that. You know, we have policies <clears throat> in effect to kind of deal with that. We're not very much well prepared to deal with women, you know, doing the same horrible things. You know, I mean, look, I mean, a guy makes a sandwich comment, you know, saying, get back in the kitchen, make me a sandwich. It's regarded as a horrible sexist thing to say. And yet women on a national TV show will get on there and laugh about a man who is a victim of sexual mutilation. And laugh about it. Laugh about it. Yeah. And I've never once heard Sharon Osbourne regard herself as a feminist. It just goes to show it's not only the feminists who are doing it. Like Stardust talks about, there's the, the, um, the capital F feminist, which are the ones that call themselves feminists. They all... You know, uh, Valerie Solanas, that woman that went around, you know, that feminist that went around shooting people, shot Andy Warhol and some other people <clears throat> with a pistol and tried to kill another guy by shooting him in the head and all that. Uh, there's Andrea Dworkin. There's uh, the famous, um, oh gosh, who is it? Uh, Gloria Steinem. There's Charmaine Greer. There's Ellen Page. Anita Sarkeesian, uh, the Fometheist. There's all these bigots out there. And they identify themselves as a feminist. They are the capital F feminist. Now, there are the lowercase or small f feminist, which happen to be Sharon Osbourne, um and a bunch of other women um, that don't call themselves feminists or don't identify themselves as feminists, but yet, you know, they will slip up and reveal that they really are a feminist underneath. Most women are, I mean, because they think feminism is about equality and equal rights and justice and all that and votes for women and you know, social justice, um, against asshole guys, and 
that they think, you know, that it will make, you know, fathers man up and be responsible for children that were, uh, that were born out of infidelity and all this other kind of stuff. And so they benefit from it. Most women, and I assure you, I assure you three out of four women will be very toxic and vile underneath that doll face um, when the right trigger sets them off. I keep telling people this and they don't understand. I mean, they, they just don't see it. All right. Um, so once again, uh, men are, you know, it's male suffering is regarded as either comical or, you know, it's regarded with indifference or is treated as if it's just insignificant or any man that seeks, you know, or if a man seeks help in a bunch of situations that, that he's some kind of pathetic or he's less than a man or he's gay, you know, if he, if he's not pursuing women, then he's regarded as, you know, as gay and, and, um, and, and pathetic. But then again, if he pursues women, he's regarded as a player or a sexual deviant or a creepy stalker or, or, you know, some kind of cheater or, you know, whatever. It's just stupid. And this is why I don't trust women. Because I don't know which women are going to do this and which ones are not. Because so many women who I thought were not like that end up being like that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to stop. I, I can't. There's too much fucking injustice, and this stuff has hurt me to my very core. This stuff has disrupted my childhood. I mean, how would you like to be, I don't know, 10 or 11 years old? You know, you're starting to go through puberty. You know, you're start, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. You're starting to get a little bit interested in girls and all that. And then, you know, right around the time when you start getting interested in girls, here come all these public service announcements on television and all these changes in policy that make you feel guilty for, for even being attracted to a girl. Yeah, so how would you like to just, you know, kind of ignore girls and kind of keep to yourself and all that and, and hide your interest in them? And then, you know, and then, of course, be gullible and all that. And then girls lead you on and tease you and make you think that they that they have feelings for you and all that. Um, and I'll have to post, I'll have to make another video and post that, uh, that, that, uh, that love letter or whatever. Then, um, or did I already make one? And, um, yeah, girl, you know, uh, and she ended it by saying, I'll see you undressed soon, or hope to see you undressed soon, and all this other kind of stuff, and they lead you on, and they do all this other kind of shit, and, you know, and then, um, you know, and then you gotta suck it up and deal with it, and then, uh, then you're in the army and, and, you know, you're in training and some girl freaking flirts with you all the time and you have to ignore her or whatever. You have to just put it aside and not act on it or, or like not reciprocate or not show any interest because if you do, you get in trouble because they call it fraternizing or fraternizing and then you get penalized for that shit and all that while you're in training anyway. And then... You know, and the girl happens to be attractive, and she's, like, all flirting and all that, and, you know, and then you don't know whether or not to believe her, because every time that some girl did that, and then you pursued her, she says she just wants to be friends, and you find out she's just leading you on, and was seeking attention or validation or whatever, so whenever a girl does flirt with you and acts like she's interested, you don't know whether or not to believe her, so then you just kind of you know, reject her or ignore her or whatever. And then let's see what, let's see. Yeah. And then, so, you know, you, you're making, you're making up your bunk, you know, uh, making your bed and, you know, organizing stuff in your wall locker so you can pass an inspection and all that. And then all the other guys around you in your, in, in the bay that you live in when you're in the army, and they slap you upside the head and tease you and and say you should have you should have jumped on that opportunity, man. You, you should she likes you, man. You should have got with her, man. And man, man, they kept slapping me upside the head and calling me a dumbass for for turning down that girl. 
and all that, so, like, fuck, and he just wouldn't leave me alone, he wouldn't stop, so I fucking rammed the dude, and knocked him into a wall locker, and then he's bigger than me, he grabbed me by the nose, and pushed up my nose a certain way, and caused, and caused me to bleed everywhere, and all that, and then that broke up the fight, and, like, why, why was we fighting? Because he wouldn't stop slapping me in the head, and calling me stupid, because I turned down a girl, I mean, fuck, that's the last time I've been in a, that's the last time I've been in a fight and that was in like early two thousand one or late two thousand. I mean, it was around twelve years ago. And all that it's just like it's fucking well that's the last time I remember being in a fight. I, mean, I think that was the last time. Anyway, it yeah, I think it was the last time I've been in a fight. And it was just all kind of stupid shit. Why? Because a girl flirted with me. I mean, fuck. I mean, like, if I'm so fucking creepy and all this other shit, like these dumb fuckers over here, uh, K Proxy One Thousand One and and Mike Murdoch and all them dipshits imply that I am. If I'm really that fucking creepy, then why do these girls come up and fucking flirt with me and and like do this shit? Now it's not a whole bunch of girls, but it's like enough to make the point that yeah, there are girls who do this shit. How about my former girlfriend who fucking stalked me for six months? That's how she described it, stalking me. Because she um, admired me from afar, you know, from a distance and all that, and had this unrequited love going on, just like guys usually do for girls. And she actually, you know, just, you know, tried to flatter me by saying, by using the word stalking, saying she stalked me for six months or whatever, and all that, you know, coming to my place of work and I guess watching me or whatever and then she wondered why I didn't notice and she tells me all this stuff later after we're dating and all this other kind of stuff and then of course like oh my gosh she's such a fucking user you use so many guys against each other and try to get me to kick out that dude and fucking get all violent and hostile at him to defend her honor and all this other creepy shit that women actually do to men and but now it's it's always portrayed as the other way around isn't it yeah uh so anyway let, let's you know let's watch a little bit uh let's watch a little bit more about whitney crop uh crop and yeah i mean so honestly if i get fucking nailed for not being sympathetic toward um toward a girl who gets suicidal because she's not as popular as she wants to be. Oh, I will fucking go off and I'll make a tidal wave of more videos. And I assure you, I will not injure or harm anybody. Uh, I will not steal or damage people's property because I'm above that. And I'm definitely not getting in anybody's pants. Okay, and that's my choice not to get in anybody's pants, okay? Uh, no, I'm going to make more videos and make and, and make my points abundantly clear with words and all that uh, to, to prove my point, all right? Now, more back to this bullshit. Initially, when I came home from work, she was excited because she had been elected to homecoming court. It wasn't until later in the evening she was in her bedroom and she was upset and crying. Like any protective mother, Whitney's mom was crushed and angry. Shame on you. You were so hurtful to her, and that's, that's just mean. But Whitney rallied, and so did the small town of West Branch where this all happened. A Facebook page of support was launched in her honor, and local businesses banded together to help. Whitney now has a beautiful dress for the dance, and a local salon is going to do Whitney's hair. We're going to do her hair um, as far as an updo or whatever she wants done, and then we will do her nails and her makeup and anything else she wants. We take... Okay, once again, we see that because the so-called victim of this bullying incident was uh, female, uh, the response is they're going to give her whatever she wants, and that's what they said, that they're going to give her whatever she wants, and that they're going to do her nails and make her hair look all good, and she's getting a new dress, and she's getting all this shit given to her for free. Why? Because she... Uh, fucking play the victim she played the victim of bullying and all this other shit now she may have felt bad i'm not going to dispute that she may have felt hurt or crushed over you know the incident with the um, false voting of homecoming queen or whatever 
she may have actually had genuine feelings of 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 neglect you know she may have felt that she'd been neglected or or she may have felt insignificant but that's exactly my point is how she dealt with it she felt rejection uh but and then because she was rejected basically as the homecoming queen she got all suicidal this is just more further proof that women are the ones who are hurt by rejection it's not men now me and the disposable human doing we oftentimes tell people and point out we are not afraid of rejection we we welcome rejection because it lets us know it lets us be aware of our safe bounds okay we need rejection we understand what no means and we need to hear it okay what we hate is being led on uh, and allowed to get ourselves into a fucking big mess to where everybody fucking hates us okay um, but no no women keep saying it's been said to me a bunch of times by girls well I know rejection hurts and well I know you've been hurt by rejection how would they know these things they're the fuck like that girl like a year ago no, not the one from the summer of 2011 that, you know, I got in trouble for the rumor, but this one that I was mentioning, like, you know, that that was into Twilight, you know, the, the one that started coming on to me and, and flirting with me and all that, uh, you know, I told her, I said, you know, I don't know what you're, what you're trying to do, but it's being interpreted as flirting, and then her reaction was just basically, so what if I am, you know, flirting, and this girl... I don't know if she really was interested in me, but, but she at least pretended or, and said that she was. You know, she said that she's attracted to me and, and, and she likes me and and basically wants to date me and all that. And, you know, I turned her down for the sake of my kids so that, you know, the kid's mom can continue to live with me and all that. And we can be a family and up until, fuck, when this, you know, up until, like, what about... Oh, a month and a half later, um, yeah, about a month and a half later when I was betrayed by my former former girlfriend when she invited her ex-boyfriend over to sleep on my floor and <clears throat> basically cheating because, I mean, fuck, I mean, come on, damn, I mean, holding hands with the girl is regarding as cheating these days. I mean, look at what Kristen, look at what Kristen Stewart did to humiliate Robert Pattinson. So, I mean, just holding hands is cheating, you know, according to women. Well, then my girlfriend, sleeping on the floor, even if she had her clothes on, sleeping on the floor, curled up, spoon position, with her ex-boyfriend's arm around her, then, yeah, that, yeah, under the blanket, yeah, that's cheating also. If holding hands is, is regarded by women as cheating these days, then I regard sleeping in the spoon position with a guy's arm around the girl, that's cheating also. If one is cheating, then the other is cheating. You know what I'm saying? Because they're both one and the same, but one is a more significant magnitude than the other, but they're still one and the same as a type of affection, you know, a type of affection. Okay? All right. Um, yeah, well, this girl that wanted to date me, I mean, I was attracted to her and all that, and, and like, after she told me several times that she was attracted to me, then I finally told her, you know, I felt comfortable enough with telling her that I was attracted to her, and still, you know, I was, I was, you know, like, she told me that she was attracted to me, I told her that I was attracted to her, she flirted with me a bunch and all that, and I still rejected her, and then that pissed her off, she, apparently, I guess she felt all crushed and all that, Enough to the point she had to go do some revenge romance by getting back with her ex-husband uh, and then fucking rubbing that in my face, advertising that shit, you know, having him drive her up to my workplace and showing up there together and doing all kind of other shit. You know, women can be pretty fucking vicious. Oh, but you know what? It, it's only the guys that get the label, isn't it? Yeah. Took a look at a dress for her and we're helping her out with um, a gown um, as well as some other community members are involved with the gown. On YouTube, would Yep, they just give her a bunch of, she gets a bunch of free stuff, you know, 
by being a victim over something so insignificant and petty. Community members are involved with the gown. On YouTube, Whitney posted a video thanking everyone for all the love. That will make a difference to our students who are doing bullies, or soon will be bullies. Wow, and Tom Wade joins us now, and shame on them, as the, her mother said. I mean, this girl was thinking about killing herself. This is something you'd normally see in a movie or something. Anything going to happen to these kids who started this? You know, and that's the, the, that's the question right now, because it's very difficult to track down all of the kids who made this vote, who organized this. A lot of times these votes are sort of anonymous. I talked to some school officials tonight who say prosecuting these things or searching for the culprits is tough. I did place a call to the district this afternoon. That call hasn't been returned, but certainly... Certainly, I think that if they can uh, sort of punish any of the people who were involved here, they will. But the good news is she's recovering. And, you know, a lot of teens don't come away from these things as well as she has. So that's the good news. Bad stuff can happen. Absolutely. But the community is rallying around her. Absolutely. So good news. Thanks, Tom. Oh, my gosh. So if they can punish the people who made false votes to hurt this girl's feelings, they certainly will. Once again, further proof that society rallies around the cry of the vagina. Exactly. Let's find some more pathetic videos. Hello, handsome. Hola, guapo. Let's go back to my place. Vamos a ir a mi casa. The phone that translates for you. Good boy. Oh gosh, this is one of uh, Whitney Crop's friends. The scar of bullying never goes away. I, I don't get it. I, I, I cannot fathom why these people feel the need to sit there and badger a young girl until she feels the need to take her life. Of course, like with... <laughs> Do do you, like, do you not understand why people feel the need to badger a dude who felt like he needed to take, needed to take his life? Let's see what you think about this, Donnie Winter. I mean, you're just another nice guy. And if you're a nice guy who has genuine feelings of, of, of compassion for people, then I commend you, and I think that's good. Uh, but you, like, not hope, you're not helping the overall picture. See, nobody needs to see nobody should be bullying anybody who's suicidal. But yet when a guy is suicidal, nobody cares. They just say, You need mental help. You're fucked up. You 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 creepy stalker asshole ma But girls are like oh, I wasn't popular so I wanted to be I feel so bad I wanted to kill myself and everybody's like Oh, don't worry, sweetie. You're you're valuable, and of course, because she has a vagina, she can she can pop out kids, you know. And it's the nest, and it's the life of the it's the the birthplace, uh, or it's the um, 
It's the womb that gives life to the tribe. And see, that's why, you, you know, it just... I gotta use the bathroom real quick. You can, you can watch this video here and see what this guy says. Every bullying there in badge. I, I don't get it. I, I, I cannot fathom why these people feel the need to sit there and badger a young girl until she feels the need to take her life. Of course, like with every bullying situation I read about or hear about, there's always the people who say, well, she was just too weak. She needed to be stronger. Bullying is a rite of passage and it helps you become a grown-up. No, it doesn't. You know, if you were bullied to that extent, would you be so willing to say that it's a rite of passage? No. And you know, I'm damn angry at people who think that children should be bullied just so they're strong enough to become an adult. Because I can tell you from personal experience that that, that scar left over from bullying never goes away. And it always comes back to haunt you, no matter how 